What's up and welcome to the channel. My name is Hexshot and thank you for joining us for our review on the Diamondback DBX Chambered in 5.7. Of course, pistols and brace pistols are super hot right now and the Diamondback offers some things that are different other than the chambering and we're going to talk about all of that. Pros and cons, we're going to do some shooting even out to 200 yards. Yes, that's right. We are now a part of a range that has um, long distance shooting and we haven't been able to take advantage of that um, or had the time to really until now and you're going to see a lot more of that from us more rifle reviews and things I promise that stuff is coming down the pipeline because I'm telling you we had some of the best I had some of the best shooting of my life shooting 300 yard plates with our new car 98 um, just a great time so that stuff is definitely more of that is definitely on the way and we actually took this one out to 200 yards, and of course I will show you that as well. So, let's get the specs and everything out of the way. You may not see a box here, that's because we did a first look video. You can go over and check that out where I show you the awesome box this thing actually comes with. So, specs here really quick. 8 inch barrel, 16.1 inches in overall length without the brace. This one did not come with a brace, so I had to get my own brace. Um, this is an SB tactical side folder. Um, height 7.3 inches and three pounds in weight. And that's of course with an empty mag and no brace or anything. So take that for what it's worth, but this thing is super, super light. The lightest pistol braced PCC, if you will, that we've done so far. And I added this Holison H07C here, which is just incredible. It did a great job. So um, let's go ahead and start with some of these features here. Of course, you have a full Picatinny rail up top right here. All right, so side charging handle right there. Of course, it has the AR style magazine release. It is not ambidextrous as far as the magazine release. Here's your bolt stop right here on the left-hand side of the gun. Side charging capabilities. It's got a pretty short stroke there um, if you look at it. All right, so there you go. You can see your barrel through the M-lock right there. Here's your adjustable gas system. All right, that's accessible from both sides. Um, I think it's easiest if you actually pull this handguard off to actually adjust that there, okay? They actually recommend taking this entire assembly out to adjust it. Um, of course, I'm sure there's some reason that they say that, um, but you can actually adjust it. Um, and, and I would say just taking the handguard off here, um, which is actually a pretty easy process, um, would, uh, would be the easiest way to actually adjust that. And then you have two pistons here that actuate and that's your actually operating system right there. And then this wicked looking muzzle device that is just their proprietary muzzle device. And of course this is threaded, um, half by 28 with a not one and nine inch right hand twist coming back to this portion of the gun. Again, it comes with a 120 round magazine. I've always thought that these that kind of had these short magazines look a little bit funny, but hey, that's just aesthetics and that can be different from person to person. Pretty much a mil spec style trigger. I didn't see anything special, but nothing really wrong with the, with the kind of trigger they chose. And then of course you have your safe and fire right here and it is not ambidextrous. Uh, just so you know, let's look at this thing compared to a Strybog because I thought that would have been kind of the closest thing. So you can see there the DBX is just a little bit shorter than the Strybog. One thing I'll say is much lighter than the Strybog as well. And then of course I have the side folding brace right here. We're gonna go to the range. We'll show you how it did there. And then when we come back, me and Mrs. Techshot will tell you pros and cons as we see it. And we'll finish out the video. Stay tuned.
can study now and you can see it. 200 yards. Hit. Good job, babe. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> now that's fun. Sweet. Show me the mag. That was lovely. Hit. You can hear it. I hear it now. Hit. 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 This thing is sweet. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that. And it was starting to get dark at the range, so you can definitely hear those shots better at 200 than you can actually see them. But we were definitely lobbing them in there. And I will say, Hollison did a great job. They zeroed this thing in, and I didn't have to touch it at all. And I definitely prefer that, especially when we're getting to the end of the day and the cameras have to have like 2,000 ISO to even run. Um, that was very helpful. So I definitely appreciate that. And really I was just aiming at the bottom of that target and just lobbing them right in there. So that was pretty cool. And I like doing things like that. It's something we've done so many pistols on the channel, traditional handguns, I should say, um, that it becomes a little monotonous. It's like, you know, a lot of times it's the same thing over and over and over. So it's nice to get down prone on the ground and shoot targets 200 yards away, or even with a car at 300 yards, you know, Everybody on the range has the latest and greatest, which I love too, but it's pretty cool shooting targets 300 yards away with iron sights on an 80-year-old rifle. To me, that's just awesome. But anyways, I digress. The DBX is why we're here, and we did have some issues. So, Mrs. Techshot, what did you like, and what didn't you like about the DBX? So, the very first thing that I noticed with the DBX was especially how thin it was and how light it was. That I really enjoyed. I really liked the mag release, surprisingly enough. Um, the position right there at the at the trigger just makes it a lot easier to get to, especially with the grip just being right there. And 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 what she's referring to, as opposed to just having a single singular button somewhere a little bit farther forward, we we do have smaller hands, especially Miss Tech Shot. They've actually attached this kind of to a bar per se, mm -hmm. um, which moves it back closer to your finger. So it's super intuitive. I really like this. I like it better than most ARs that I would say. Um, it's super intuitive and it's right there and it's got really positive pressure so those mags just spit right out of there. Yeah, it was really nice. What else did you like about it? So because of how lightweight it is and how thin it is, the recoil I felt was less to nothing. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. I had yeah. a really good time with it. Yeah, and one thing that you gain as far as the benefits from this is what you've seen at 200 yards, which you don't get in nine mil. Yeah. And really at this time, at, you know, this is kind of a, a really weird time right now where ammo is so expensive. The 5.7 ammo wasn't that much more expensive than nine millimeter, really. I think it was about yeah. $4 more per box. So you don't really gain anything buying a nine millimeter chambered gun at a time like this. You will in the future with ammo costs, but you gain the benefit of being able to go out to longer distances, which is definitely a great thing. Plus, what 5.7 brings to the table as far as that chambering. Um, there's still not a ton of guns chambered in that, but more and more manufacturers, it seems, at least Ruger and Diamondback have kind of picked this up and you know they want to see that round continue to do well, and it's mm -hmm. a good round. One thing I will say, and nothing against FN, they make amazing stuff, but that blue-tipped uh, FN ammo, I had issues in the Ruger 5.7. I've had issues in this. I, from all accounts, I've heard that it's really awesome ammo, but we have had issues with that. It was within the first hundred rounds, I will say that. And, and you got to forgive us, man, too. Ammo is so expensive. I can't buy a thousand rounds of 5.7 and shoot it through this and do a true 
test on this, okay? I'm doing a test more for the practical average person that's gonna take their gun out once or twice a month or whatever the case may be. Um, that's the kind of tests I'm really doing here. So you gotta forgive us the, with ammo and the way things are, I can't do a thousand rounds through every gun. But what I can tell you, we had some issues, but it seemed really focused on that. It, it was really mainly with that blue tip effing ammo. And that's all I can really speak of. As far as that, we had a couple of stoppages, I think with the regular American Eagle, but it definitely ran a little bit more reliably than that. So for me, um, this gun, I would have to run it a heck of a lot more and make sure before I were to ever use it as like a home defense or anything like that where I'm using it to protect my family. Now, if I say to me, this is going to be mainly a range type of gun and just have fun with it. Uh, to me, that's acceptable, I think, because even then we're still inside of 100, 100 rounds. I think now we're about 120 rounds. Um, so it, it, there's two sides to this. It depends on what this is going to be for. If this is going to be your inside home defense type of gun and you're going to trust your life and your family's life to it, I would say, uh, me personally, I need to run some more rounds through it and make sure it's actually mm -hmm. reliable for that role. For yeah. the range, I think it did pretty dang amazing. And the weight on it, I loved it. It's super light. Yeah. It's th it feels like nothing. Yeah. I mean, I dare to say it feels like a toy almost, even though we know it's not. Yeah. Um, I really like this HS 507C. Uh, it has like the um, uh, it has the option to change to just a, 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 a dot or you have the option to change with the like ring target, and the little yeah. crosshairs, which is pretty cool as well. Super comfortable, very, very little felt recoil. You can just lob shots in there on target. And I think at the, uh, on the pistol side, we were about maybe, eh, maybe 20 yards, something like that. And it's just quick yeah, transition. And it, it was, it was definitely a great yeah. time. It only comes with one mag. These are not the cheapest guns either, so somewhere around 11, 1200 bucks as we're recording this, something like that. You could obviously find them cheaper maybe, but, um, and the disassembly, <laughs> the full disassembly I think would be kind of a con. The, only, the fact it only comes with one mag would be a con. Um, mm. And the price of the ammo in normal time compared to nine mil is a con, but again, you have the pros as far as what that ammo can really do for you. And I, a brace. Yeah, it didn't come I mean, with a brace. the fact that it doesn't come with a brace. Well, I, I, what they told me is a lot of this is stemming from how how braces are kind of on the hot on the seat. Fence, yeah. So, you know, they, they didn't really know how to go about that. So that's why it did not come. Because originally it was supposed to come with a brace. And they had to, uh, they changed their minds on that as far as sending them with braces. And, hey, they, they got to do what they got to do. Yeah. So I So I definitely get that. Um, I love the side charging capability and I love the controls of this gun, man. It's super easy to control. I love the slide stop. It works really easily. And the amount of things that you can, or the, the way you can configure this, it already has the M lock. It already has the pick rail. It's just a super comfortable gun. That's going to offer you better long range. Sorry, snake with better long range capabilities with the five, seven round than something in nine millimeters. So besides a few cons, um, I actually like it. Uh, you have the adjustable gas system. It's a very interesting design, and I can't wait to run this more. And as we run it more, as we get more ammo, hey, maybe we'll report to you guys in the future with a future video and tell you kind of how things are running uh, from here on out. But for now, I definitely say we like it. If I were to grade it, I'd give it like a 7.5 to 8 out of 10. I wouldn't grade it higher just because we don't know if those issues it, we really need to see if those issues are just ammo related yeah. are they gun related or what is going on there uh but it's definitely a cool gun for sure and a great platform i'm glad diamondback sent this one to us to test anything you want to add i think you kind of went all out there baby hey hey that's how i roll you get me started <laughs> and i'm done so there we go all right so thank you guys for watching we'll see you in the next one and as always holding down